Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is a dramatic, classic black, smoky eye, nude lip, I guess you could call it bombshell look. I wanted to put this video out for you today because it's Friday, it's the weekend, so maybe you're going out on a date or with your husband or maybe with the girls or maybe you just wanna play with makeup and try a new look. This is that classic black, dark, smoky eye. And it's very, very easy to achieve. The biggest complaint I hear from women is that it makes them look like, you know, they've been punched in the eye and, you know, you have to judge for yourself um, how much makeup is is appropriate for you and that you're comfortable in and what you think looks good on you. Because if you could put this look on and if you don't feel good in it, then you won't rock it. You won't exude the confidence that you have to have to wear this type of dra dramatic look. So. I'm gonna show you using one palette today how to get, how I got this look, and hopefully I did a good job, or hopefully I do a good job while I'm filming this after I already recorded it. So hopefully I did a good job in showing you how I achieved it, and hopefully you like it. And there are variations, as I mentioned in the video, of colors you can use. This is just the technique that I like to use when I'm doing this look, and it doesn't really take that long at all. And so if you wanna know, keep watching. So I've already primed my eye with some shadow primer and I did put a little of uh, little concealer on my lid. I used the MAC Studio, I don't know, it's all kind of faded off there. I think this one is called Studio Finish and it's NW20 is what I used on my lid. Um, I usually use you know soft ochre paint pot or something like that. And so I'm going to use for this look, the Naked Basics, the original Naked Basics. I know there's two of them now. <clears throat> and these are the shades, perfect for this type of smoky eye. And I'm gonna start with the shade WOS, which is just a matte ivory. And I'm going to put that underneath my brow and all over my lid with a flat shader brush. So underneath the brow, inner to outer, corner. I have no concealer on under my eye right now because it's going to get messy. And normally I would probably do my eyes with this look first, but I didn't today. So there we have that. Then I'm going to flip my brush around to use any type of fluffy brush. Again, this one is a quick color increase from Bare, Bare Essentials, but I think it came in a kit, so I don't think it's available anymore. I'm going to take <clears throat> ah, Naked 2 and Faint. These two, one's like a light taupe and one is a darker taupe. And I'm gonna stick my brush into both colors, tap off my excess, and maybe it's better if I go like this without leaning in, maybe you can see it better. I'm gonna start at the outer corner and just make that my transition color. Whenever you're doing a heavy, smoky eye, it's all about layering the color. And again, because my lids are hooded, I have to really watch where I place that crease color. So what you wanna do with a hooded eye is look straight on and then push the brush right to where it kind of, you know, you, where you push the brush in. And then you can close your eye and I'm a big circle maker. And then I go in the inner corner too because the black is gonna cover the whole eye. So I wanna make sure I get, lay that base down on the whole lid and just blend, 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 blend. And then just go back in a couple times so you've got some really nice dark depth to it. And don't worry about going over here because we'll clean that up. And don't go too high on the brow bone either. Again, with hooded eyes, it's a little bit more difficult to judge how high you should go. So I do like to go a little higher because especially when I put my lashes on, you know, it's hard to see um, any shadow once the lashes go on. So then I'm gonna take another fluffy, this one's a little bit more tapered crease. This one is from Scott Barnes. Obviously his line doesn't exist right now. I think he's coming back out with it um, next year or something, but I've had these for a while because I carried his brand in my store many years ago. So now I'm gonna go into Crave, which is the black shade. And I'm going to start at the outer corner, lightly, lightly. I always start the outer corner and I'm making little circles as if I was only gonna do it over here, as if this was the only area I was gonna apply this color to. Just blend, blend, blend. Then I start moving it into the crease 
and in that inner corner. Again, don't worry about the darkness because it's going to get cleaned up. The darkness in the inner corner because the inner corner is going to get brightened um, by concealer and another shadow. So make sure you leave what you're going to have now is going to look like a jumbled mess, but you're going to have a nice little area of lightness in there. And then you're going to take that same brush. Now that you've gotten most of the product off of it, you're going to take it and cover that light spot. So that way you've made your shape, you've got the majority of the color in your crease, the inner corner and the outer corner, and you're just gently covering that area. So it's not like a stark, stark black. And also if you decide you want to go put another color like in the center of the lid, there's so many ways you can expand on this look but I'm just keeping it pretty easy today. So that's that. That's the shape. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take a warm brown shade. For that, I'm gonna use Swiss Chocolate from MAC, which is a nice warm um, chocolatey brown. Almost has a little bit of red in it. And then I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and I am going to go into my crease, my upper crease. Actually, let me get that um, compact again. It's easier for me to do it this way for you. And I'm gonna go in that crease, again, always starting the outer corner and then blending it out. So I'm warming up the crease area, giving it a little more depth, make the eyes look less, a little less hooded, a little bit more to appear to have a crease and just blend, 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 blend. Okay. So now that I've done that, I have some areas that I definitely want to clean up. So I'm going to take that another flat shader brush and I'm going to go back into the WOS and I'm going to go along the entire length of my brow and it's also going to diffuse the line above here a little bit, the line where the, the um, Swiss chocolate was. It's going to diffuse that a little bit. Okay, so next I'm going to take a little teeny, teeny brush for my lower lash line. This is a Stila brush number 28. It's double ended. And I'm going to take that brush and I am going to, oops, I went into black first. I didn't mean to go in the black first. I'm going to go into faint. Oh, now I have stuff all over my hand. I'm going to go into faint, which is that darker taupe. Again, we're, we're building. And so that darker taupe is going to go right under the lash line. Just softly under the lash line. And then we're going to go into the black and do that softly under the lash line as well. And as you notice, I'm just barely, hopefully you notice, I'm just barely touching my lash line with this. Because black can be very difficult to work with. You could get a lot of fallout, especially if you're new to working with black. And you can use a deep gray for this look, a deep plum. Okay. So then we're not going to do liquid liner today. I'm going, because I want it to be, when you have this dark of an eye, you want it to keep, you want to keep it a little bit softer. So I'm going to just take um, a flat top brush. This is a Sigma flat definer E15. And I'm going to take that and go right into, right straight into it, tapping off. And I'm just going to run that along my lash line not winging it, just giving it a soft, a soft line. Okay. And then I want to go back and I'm going to blend some more because you can never blend too much with a look like this. Okay. Now I'm going to take a wipe. Always have to have those wipes. It's 
especially when you're working with a smoky eye. And I'm going to put my finger around it and I'm going to clean up the inner corner, going just under where I did that shadow to be sure I don't take the shadow off. And then go up in an angle towards my brow. Being careful not to take off my brow. <laughs> Work too hard for those brows. So then I'm going to take a tissue and blot off any dampness from my wipe. And now I'm going to take my concealer. You can use a brush or your finger. And again, this is a MAC NW20, I think. And I'm going to go in to my inner corner. And then under here, under the eye, and then taking it up, following that line that I made with the wipe. And then I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender and I'm gonna tap my excess. And I will do a video on concealers, um, you know, the best ones that I found to not crease. But I do find that the Beauty Blender really, really helps with, um, you know, stop increasing a damp one, not like a super, super wet one, but one that is just yeah, damp, like barely, barely wet. Okay. So now we have the eye and then we are going to take, um, oh, I didn't bring down my under eye uh, setting powder, but um, that's all right. I can do that after. I'm going to take my lash curler and curl my lashes. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with the shader brush and I'm going to take that Venus, which is a shimmery white. I know some people don't like the shimmery under eye highlight and that's fine. You could use a matte white. You could use a matte ivory. I just want, like something a little bit bolder than, than um, the WOS. So Mac Blanc type, um, there are tons of other choices. You don't have to do this, but I'm just wanted to kind of wanted to stick to one palette. So I'm using Venus and I'm just going in the height of my brow, the top, 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 top part of my brow and the inner corner. And then I'm taking what I have left and just kind of touching up here. And then I take my finger and I just kind of go in those inner corners and smooth everything out. Okay. And you'll find that at, if you're um, a more mature woman like myself, um, you know, you're not in your twenties, you don't have perfectly smooth lids. This look can um, be a little frightening because it doesn't appear as smooth as younger lids. It's just not going to, you have to work to make it as smooth as possible. And if your eyes are very, very, um, crepey or, or have more um, wrinkling to them, you might want to just use like a, a softer shade. Don't really do the black and maybe just keep the, keep it concentrated on the outer corner. There are so many different ways to do smoky eyes. This one just works particularly well for hooded eyes, which is why I did this, um, this type of look today because I do have a hooded eye. A lot of people have hooded eyes, but this does work on people without hooded eyes as well. So now that I have curled my lashes, I'm just going to put on a little mascara and then I'm going to put on some lashes and I will be back in a second. So of course the lashes are completely optional. You do not have to do the lashes. I just love lashes and I live in Las Vegas, so it's all bigger and showier here. So what I didn't, what I forgot to show you was that I did go ahead and put in, put on this NC15 NW20 chromographic pencil and I'm putting that in my inner rim because sometimes when you do a very, well not sometimes, almost always, oh, I'm out of the frame again, one of these days, one of these days I'll get this right. Um, when, you do it, when you're doing a very black eye on somebody with smaller eyes, it's nice to use a lighter pencil on the inner rim to open up the eye. Then I've already done my contouring and for this type of look, it's just your classic smoky eye nude lip. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite neutral blushes. This is Buff from MAC. 
and I like to smile and put it on the apples of my cheeks and blend it backwards, well, back towards my ear or hairline. And then for highlight, I'm going to use something, a new discovery I learned from another YouTuber. This is NYX Ultra Pearl Mania, and it's like $3 at um, Ulta, and it's beautiful. This one is, I think, called Mink, and you put a little bit on the back of your hand, just a tiny, tiny bit, like this much, you can see. Tiny, tiny little bit, just basically what's on the, um, the rim of container. Then I'm going to take my Real Techniques brush and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to highlight my cheekbone. Look how pretty that is. Hopefully it's picking up. And I'm not going to do too much because I'm an oily, you know, large poured lady, so I'm not going to do too much. You can see the side. Really, really pretty. And this is, again, that Ultra Pearl Mania and I will write it down below. And then on my lips, oh, I was going to take my lips off and redo them for you, but not necessary. I used the 1C, part of my chip nails, I used the 1C Makeup Forever Aqualip with the NYX Simply Nude Lip Cream in 05. And then I topped it with Max Flora Abundance Lip Glass. So this is it. This is the final look, and I will show it to you one more time in, well, the whole look, in just a second. So this is it. This is the final look one more time. It is a dark, smoky eye with a nude, glowy cheek and a nude lip. I do understand this video is not, or this look is not for everybody. It's not something everybody's going to try, but I did just want to put it out there for you because it is one of those kind of easy, classic looks that, when I say easy, I mean that it's not a lot of steps, it's not a lot of products. It's um, a classic look that looks very nice on most people. Um, there are some women that might look at this and say to themselves, it's just not for me, I'll never do it, and that's fine. But if you do try it, I would love to see it. Please email me a photo or tag me on Instagram in your recreation, and that would just thrill me to see you giving this a try, because makeup should be fun and about experimentation and no limits, it washes right off. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you will continue to support my channel and comment and give me thumbs up. It makes me feel so good and I'm so appreciative. And that's it. I will see you in the next video.